All right, welcome to July. We're gonna have a standing practice today with a focus on making poses that we hold in stillness still feel alive and vibrant rather than stagnant. And a lot of this work will be addressing the movement of flesh as we hold our bones and our anatomy kind of in a static position, we will be kind of using a strap to help us keep the flesh kind of intelligently moving to support the alignment. So it's going to require a strap. Make sure you have that. And because it's the fifth, we'll start with our less favored cross-legged position. And just take a moment to cross at the mid shins, be towards the outer and tops of your feet and then adjusting the flesh out from under you from the sitting bones, pulling it diagonally back towards the outer thighs and hips. And take a moment to just kind of rock back and forth side to side and kind of find the center points of your sitting bones. And then letting the spine start to align up from there and the skull above the spine, the shoulders sitting back. And then moving the hands together in front of your heart to Bring yourself kind of into your center. You can close your eyes and look away from the brain toward your cheeks, which gives us an, kind of an instinct to pay attention to the lowest parts of our body. And you might notice some reflexive gripping contraction in your groins and hips. And see if you can tap into the weight of your femur bones, those long, heavy thigh bones, and kind of releasing the weight of those bones, helping the hips and groins soften a bit. Feeling the sitting bones rooting down. And if we take care of what supports us, what connects us to the earth, we start to find a lightness the spine. Unhinging the jaw from any fixed or set position. And we're spending the next minute following each passing breath with your attention. Aligning your awareness with present moment. And attempt to keep your heart forward as you bow towards your heart. Release your hands, lift your head, and let your eyes gently open. And welcome. All right. So we are doing a standing practice today, so I just wanted to take a little time on the floor to prepare the legs, starting with hero pose, Virasana. So you're taking your time to set this up so that you can support your sitting bones, you can align your knees, and you can get into the pose as deeply as possible with that alignment and support. So take time to move flesh out of the way Look at your knees, make sure you see them, the four corners of each knee looking straight ahead. You might look back at your toes. Try to have your toes directly in line with your heels, not angled out. And attempt to bring your small toes down as much as your big toes are down. And sometimes you might actually take your hand and turn the feet, the outer feet, just kind of peeling the outer feet toward the floor manual manipulation to help you align and taking your tailbone into the body shoulders above the hips pressing down into the soles of the feet and attempting to adjust the skull right above the spine 
come into a little bit of uh, spinal movement from here. We'll keep the legs as they are. Inhale, raising your arms. And as you anchor into the trunk with the shoulders, extend up through the fingertips. Try to keep your head right above your spine. Straighten your arms as fully as possible and attempt to align your wrists with the shoulders. That being said, you might need to widen your wrists to support the chest remaining open. We'll come to the top of an in-breath and on your exhale, we're gonna to turn to the right. We'll take your left hand onto your right outer thigh and your right hand behind you. You might need to prop the hand so that you don't angle your trunk. Keep your trunk upright. And then be a little bit more interested in the chest turning than in the lower back. So you might even stabilize the lower back with a little bit of gripping into the abdominals, maybe gently squeezing the hip bones toward one another. And as the chest starts to turn to the right, you can finish it off by just looking over the right shoulder. On an in-breath, taking the arms back up and the torso out of the twist. Exhale, we're gonna to move to the left. Right hand to the left thigh, left hand behind you. Using your legs, shin bones, toes, tops of your feet as anchors. Keep gripping the floor as best you can with the outer shins. There's some rolling down of the flesh of the outer shins. Bringing that right armpit chest out of that congested state. And finish with the head turning. Inhale, raising the arms. And exhale, releasing the arms. Okay, we're gonna equalize the knees with a single leg plank. So we're gonna come out of the hero pose and you can come onto your hands and knees taking table pose and then taking your right leg back. So your toes will be tucked under your right leg as extended as you can make it, which doesn't mean we're hyper extending the knee. So you should have some grip in your thigh muscle some yawning open of the back of the knee. And just really powerfully extending the leg to release the, the deep knee flexion from Virasana and to also extend the back of the leg. Go ahead and switch to the other side. Taking the left toes as well underneath as you can, even the pinky toe, which tends to just dangle there and maybe become a little bit um, without purpose, give it some direction toward the top of the mat, extend back through the four corners of your heel, each ball mound as well, and keep your leg well extended. Remembering the idea that we can't wiggle the kneecap if the leg is very well extended. And then go ahead and Come into child's pose with the knees separating wide and the feet coming together and then take the hips as far back as you can. Keeping your arms straight. So you might need a block under your forehead if you feel like your head is really dunking. Try to keep your arms straight and turning the inner elbows gently toward the ceiling, but at the same time rolling your inner wrists down and anchoring into your thumbs and index fingers. Reminding your shoulders to move toward the hips, dynamic action. The fingertips extend away from the shoulders, the shoulders move toward the hips. And again, to equalize the knees and relieve the knees, we're going to follow with Adho Mukha Svanasana, which is downward facing dog. Make sure your middle fingers are pointing forward. And your forefingers are extended as far as they can from each other, but the thumbs are about half their full distance that they can go. Curl the toes under and on an exhale, extending the legs, taking your chest closer to your thighs, moving your thighs back, moving your shin bones back, moving your thigh bones back. 
And then starting to extend the heels down without the sitting bones following. So resist the sitting bones away from the heels. Try to gently corset the front body. Don't collapse into your front body. So scooping the inner front ribs together and toward the back body. Try to be even over the ball mound. We tend to have imbalances there. So if you tend to roll out, roll in. If you tend to roll in, roll out. About five more breaths. And on an inhalation, start to move toward the wrists. And we'll come into a resting Uttanasana. You might need your knees a little bit bent. The feet should still be hip distance. Your toes should be in front of your heels. And then take hold of your elbows, cradle your elbows and your opposite hands, and just hang freely. Let the skull hang freely from the spine. And if your head is a little kind of stuck or your neck feels a little stuck, you might circle your chin around. You might do a slow nod and kind of freeing the neck from any stuckness. And go ahead and drop your hands, bend your knees and find your way up. I'm gonna move my camera a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna come into Standing Mountain Still don't have a head. <laughs> Tilting my camera. There we go. So try to join your feet if you can. Of course, if your balance is off today, you can take more space. Second toes should be directly in front of heels. And then our shoulders adjust back in line with the hips. Try to relax the buttocks by moving the flesh of your inner thighs. Slightly back, not overly so. We don't want to overcorrect. And make sure the skull is right above the spine. If you were standing against a wall, the back of the head would be feeling the wall. And then try not to tilt your chin up or down, just a level, neutral chin. One of the markers of starting to really perfect our poses or master our poses is that we can kind of sense the whole body all at once. So just bringing your awareness into all the interior space of your body. And we're standing pretty still, but notice what is keeping this pose very much alive, the breath, the awareness, the movement of flesh, Our edge, that perfect sweet spot we seek in our poses is a moving target, which means we can't fall asleep in our poses. We have to remain really vigilant, aware, and responsive. Good. So let's go ahead and open the eyes and just kind of shake free, let that go. We're going to come into a tree pose just to really kind of sharpen and hone in on our tension, our focus, and we're going to start with the right leg coming into the bent knee position first. You'll anchor into your left foot and stack your right heel against your left inner ankle or inner shin, and then right away adjusting back to midline because the hip, hip tends to pop out. So pull your left hip toward midline, left inner thigh moves in as well. Directing your right knee to the side, think about rolling the right buttock under, don't let your right hip point follow. So you got to resist the hip and knee away from each other. And then as we start to develop the pose, the hands might move to the heart center. Keep the shoulders back. Maybe we step up the leg, either below or above the knee. And maybe we move the arms up. Picking a focal point that's just directly out in front of your line of vision, your horizon line. 
and just kind of fixing your gaze to that object. Pull yourself back inside your body. Don't externalize your attention, keep it inward. And feel how your pose is constantly flowing with micro movements. The body is never quite still. We notice this more in our balancing poses. We constantly make small refined movements to keep ourselves in balance, equalized. You're gonna to start to reverse those steps you took in to come out. And then go ahead and step down with your right foot. Maybe shake out your left leg if it's tired. And then placing your left heel against your right ankle or shin. You can prepare in the same way, moving the hip bone back to midline. That's our adduction. Maybe stepping up the leg, keeping the knee moving out, the buttock rolling under, hands move to the heart center, the gaze is anchored directly ahead. And then rather than telling yourself when to advance the pose, just wait for the inner cueing, the instinct of the body. Sometimes our cues don't come and we wish they would. Just notice that, but don't force anything that's not ready. Sensing the aliveness here as you hold your tree pose. Constant negotiation going on in the body. And then gently start to reverse those steps back out and step down with the left, shake up the right. So we aren't gonna be jumping out today because we're working with a strap and I just always want to prioritize safety. I don't like jumping out when we're working with kind of prop variations. So the first thing we're going to do is our triangle pose, which is a lateral pose, meaning the legs move away from midline. And we're going to be working with the rotation of the flesh of the right thigh first. So you're going to have your right toes pointing out your left toes slightly pointing in. And we're going to make a big loose loop, meaning it's passable. You don't have to bind the strap, just pass your tail through the rings. And you're gonna to have to place that, sorry, I had you step in already. You're gonna place that over your right thigh. What we're going to attempt to do is pull on that tail outwards. So you're pulling toward the outer thigh. We want to encourage the rotation of the thigh in this direction in this pose. Every pose is different, but in this pose, you might remember your knee tends to drag in. So this is going to keep your knee tracking with the toes and keep this pose very aligned. If you have trouble gripping your strap, feel free to wrap your hand and just kind of wrap the knuckles. And then you're going to just kind of gently pull toward the outer right thigh. You can take your left hand to your left hip. There's a little bit of an imbalanced feeling in the knee, in the forward leg in this pose. Some of us have to micro bend the knee because we tend to hyperextend, which means we push back into the back of the knee. We don't want to overdo the extension. So you might need to squeeze your thigh muscle a little bit. Try to face forward, Kathleen, uh, rather than, yep. So we want to keep our hips level to the broad side of the mat. Just bringing the aliveness here to the flesh moving on the right leg. And on your inhale, you can lift up and out of it. And you might turn your right toes back in, find a way to move your feet closer together. And we're just gonna switch over to the other side. So this won't be your deepest, personal deepest triangle pose. So it's not about your fullest expression of your tri triangle pose. It's really about getting the feeling of aliveness that has to continue in this flesh of our thigh to keep the pose in alignment. When the pose is in alignment, 
that global awareness I was talking about earlier tends to be more readily available. So you're going to again loop up around kind of towards the groins. Make sure your hips are turning toward the broad side of your mat. You have the intersection of the left heel to the right arch. You're pulling on the strap, moving the flesh of the inner thigh outward. So you're pulling your hand back. You're going to hinge toward the left side here. Right hand can stay on your hip. Be aware of your knee. We don't want to lock the knee. And we don't want to overcorrect either. So don't take the thigh beyond where the knee aligns with the toes. Okay, don't overdo it. So when we do these poses with these kind of manipulations, these manual manipulations, the body remembers. So the next time you do triangle pose without this manipulation, your body will remember this direction to your inner thigh. And your inner thigh and the flesh will have kind of that memory. Good, inhale, come up. Beautiful. Safely find your way out of there. We're gonna loop up again with the right thigh for warrior two. So you'll find your way to placing the strap back over the right thigh. And I really want you to take it as close as you can to your hip crease. And take your hand as close as you can to the loop. So you don't wanna have a giant tail and then your hand have your hand as close to your loop as you can. And then, so you're gonna just create the shape. We're not gonna get super picky, nitpicky about getting into the pose. So create the shape, the square kind of right angle with your right knee, the straight left leg, the toes turned in. And then you're gonna take left hand and either grab onto your right forearm or maybe a piece of the strap. But what we're attempting to do is taking the arm behind us, we're getting this bind, which is the word we use in yoga, which keeps kind of a secure loop of energy going. Binds are very, um, they're like a boost for our poses. So turning your torso away from that right leg, turn your torso away from that right leg, so you're squaring hips and shoulders, and go a little deeper with the knee bend. You're pulling that strap so that the inner thigh flesh rolls up and over the other side and down the outer thigh side. Anchor into the outer edge of your left foot. Keep a soft gaze. Good. And on an inhale, push down through the foot to straighten. Help relieve that loop. You're safely gonna transfer the strap to the other side. Stepping in with the left leg. So we want to bring it up like it's a harness. So really close to the upper inner thigh where the pelvis meets the thigh. And again, your hand should be really close so that you're tight. The, the loop is tight and your hand is close to that <clears throat> loop. And then you'll create the shape with your legs. That, Good shape. You're going to pull gently with the hand, rolling toward the outer hip and down toward the floor to move the adjustment of flesh, upper thigh rolling out. Take the right hand and either grabbing a piece of the strap or grab your wrist or forearm from behind. This helps the shoulders move back. There's flesh movement in the shoulders to encourage the external rotation. See if you can use the harnessing feeling to sink deeper into the square shape. So use that support of your strap on your thigh to help you surrender a little deeper. If we kind of tend to hang out in limbo land here. We can go deeper, but we don't usually allow ourselves to because we don't feel supported. This hopefully gives you that feeling that you can surrender into a deeper square shape. Don't let your trunk tip to the left. Keep your torso very upright and re revolve your trunk from left to right without the knee flagging in, which means you have to keep that flesh movement of the inner thigh continuing. Good. And then push down into the floor to straighten. 
Help yourself safely. Take that loop off. Okay. And back to the right. So sorry about all this back forth, back and forth, but I prefer to do each pose individually on each side just so we get the experience on each side. It's a good way to compare sides of your body and also really land these instructions, which can be a little bit sometimes. I don't know what the word is, esoteric maybe. So we're coming back to warrior two, but we're gonna bring in side angle pose. So it's the very same work with the legs, except as we know, we tend to tilt the torso. to have this line continuous from the thigh out through eventually the arm, but we're not gonna add that arm today. Create that shape, same as warrior two. Now your left hand is gonna reach around and be the holder. So your left hand is reaching around behind you and is holding, okay? As close to that loop as you can get. Now you're gonna angle over and rest your right forearm on your thigh. And see if you can try to pull down a little bit with your hand to encourage the inner thigh flesh to roll up. Keep your left shoulder in external rotation, meaning it's not caving in toward the floor. Yes, these look beautiful. Good. And again, you have to support the harness. Maybe you could go a little deeper, sinking into a deeper square shape. Good. Good, good, good. So again, push down through the foot, straighten the legs safely. Transition. We'll be looping. Right at that hip crease again, left side. So I have a reminder in my head to cut one of my straps because this excess length, it's just a safety hazard. So if you have that going on, you might get a second strap that's shorter for things like this or just cut one. So first just start with your square shape. Then you're going to find your right hand grabbing as close to that left sided strap as you can, pulling to your right side with that hand. Good. Angle the trunk. We have that nice resistant right hand supporting us, anchoring us. Angle the trunk to the left, rest, rest that forearm on your thigh. Use your right hand on your buttock to roll the right buttock forward. And maybe relax a little bit more into your square shape, feeling the support of that harness. Help you just kind of suspend the hammock hammock the inner thigh, groin, hip. Good. Inhale, coming up. Beautiful work. And now safely help yourself transition out. So we're gonna just break it up with a little mountain pose here. We will come back to the strap, you can just put it aside. As we practice, we feel steadiness come into the physical body. And so it's nice to just throw a few mountain poses into your practice, just to check in with that internal steadiness, which as we know, lends itself to mental steadiness eventually. And even though there's still micro movements and responses to those little micro movements, they're probably fewer and farther between just as the thought waves start to have more gaps between. And always removing any judgment if you sense there's not a lot more steadiness than there was before. More practice is needed and there's no judgment needed for that. So let's open our eyes. And now we're going to come into Parjvottanasana. 
This is an interesting strap maneuver. I'm sure you're all capable of. We don't need the loop anymore. And we're not going to, uh, what was I gonna say? Don't remember, it was a long weekend. Okay, so right foot forward, left foot back. So this is, if you've ever done like basic weaving, this is a very kind of woven technique. I call it an S shape, sideways S shape. So we know in Parjvottanasana, because of asymmetrical legs, we have to counter that. The right leg needs to roll back, the left leg needs to come forward. So the strap is gonna help us. So you're gonna place the strap over your right front thigh. I actually find it easier to get into this weaving pattern without being in the stance already. So you're gonna to be to the back of the left thigh with your strap and the front of the right thigh with the strap. Try to have enough length on both sides. You're able to work with a little bit of length on each side. You don't wanna be right up close to the thigh like we were before. So hopefully you can see this. I have the strap over my right thigh and behind my left thigh. Okay, you're in the stance, which means you're not on the balance beam. Again, if you need a little support with grip, you can wrap your hands. And because we have momentum coming forward with the trunk tipping forward in this pose, your hands, this is why you need space of the strap, your hands are gonna extend back behind you. And with the right hand, you're pushing back. With the left hand, you're pulling forward to equalize the rotation of the hips. Meanwhile, adjust the flesh of the shoulders. If you feel droopy, lift the inner upper arms and roll it out. Shoot the breastbone forward. Again, this isn't your deepest Parjvottanasana. You might not even be level with the floor today. Keep the legs firm and steady and keep manipulating the hands. So right hand pushes back, left rolls forward. Flesh is moving. So you have oppositional flesh of the inner thighs here. Right thigh rolls up left thigh rolls back. I should have said inner thigh. Right inner thigh moves up and around. Left inner thigh moves back and around. Inhale, come up. Nice job. Okay, go ahead and switch. So now you have to do your weaving pattern so that your strap is going across the front left thigh and it's more effective if it's near that crease and now you're gonna to try to separate it into the inner thigh and around the back of the right thigh. So I tend to like to use my hands behind me. I, I'm letting out enough slack that my arms can straighten and I'm trying to rotate my palms to face out, which is gonna assist my arms to rotate in the direction I want them to. So like a generous stance, front foot to back foot, and nice width as well, so you can be really stable. And then you're pulling with the right hand, you're pushing back with the left hand, you're gonna angle forward. Feel the flesh of the shoulders. A lot of times we have very kind of connective tissue tension in the shoulders, so you might be feeling a lot here. Keep encouraging the outer right hip to roll forward, the outer left hip to roll back. Your arms can be wide, breathe, and then inhale and release. Nice work. Good. Well, I know that that was a big one for me, but everybody's different. Okay, so we're gonna work similarly with warrior one except one hand will be pushing down, one hand will be pushing up. So we're gonna go back to the S shape. Right foot forward, left foot back. So you might wanna get your strap in place before you separate your feet. You're taking the belt over the right thigh, behind the left thigh. And then you'll step into that square shape for warrior one. Okay, so remember that we need enough spacing between the feet that we can really not lose sight of the toes of the forward leg, meaning your knee should be directly above the, the ankle. 
Okay, so now we're going to equalize by pushing down with your right hand. Push down, we're rolling the outer hip down, pull up with your left hand. Nice little buttock lift for the left buttock. You're helping open that hip flexor with a little pressure from behind. And even here, the knee might try to drag inward, so keeping a little bit of a lift to your inner thigh. Move the tailbone in, of course. All the things we know about this pose should still be at play, even if we're really tuning into one specific action. And just notice how you're holding the pose, but you are not in screensaver mode, that's what I call it. You're very attentive and responsive. Back leg is in full extension. There's no quasi straight leg. Completely straight, just don't hyper extend. Wonderful. Go ahead and safely help yourself out of there. We're going to transition so that we're taking left side. So the strap is passing over the left thigh, behind the right thigh. Okay. So again, it's the very harnessed feeling. You're very close to the pelvis, very close to the hip crease. And your left hand should be adjacent to the right hip, sorry, left hip, sorry. You're gonna pull down, like push down. And then you're gonna pull up with your right hand near the outer right buttock. Keep the shoulders externally rotating. Envision the flesh of the shoulders rotating from the front shoulder toward the back shoulder, back armpit area. Take the tailbone forward if you sense it's flying back. Keep your skull above your spine. Use the harnessing effect to sink a little deeper. Full extension of right leg. Global awareness. Good. Go ahead and straighten. You can revolve wide and just kind of release the, the strap. And again, just put it aside. Come back to mountain pose. And just be with your breath. Be with any residual sensation, anything you notice. Soft buttocks. Balancing the feet. Be aware of the placement of the skull. Try to lift from your chin to the base of the skull. And notice how there's just tiny little auto corrections in the body to keep you stable, to keep you upright, to keep you still. Go ahead and blink your eyes open. We're going to start to wind down now with Prasarita Padottanasana. So we don't need this strap anymore. Feel free to use something for head or hand support. So if you want to use your blocks, if you want to use a chair to rest your arms and forehead, we are going to hold the pose for a couple minutes. So you definitely want to be in a pose that feels sustainable and supported. You might also be able to create a setup where your head is supported, crown of your head is supported with some assembly of props. It's the crown of the head though, not the forehead. If you're using a chair, it can be the forehead. And you're going to step wide, of course, and just take some time with the feet. We don't want to, remember, we don't want to bulldoze the pinky toes. We don't want to collapse the outer feet. So we want to bring some awareness to the big toe ball mounds, the inner heels. Also take the flesh of the outer feet to the floor. And then try to hinge at the hips by tilting the pelvis forward, keeping the low back happy and neutral. And then taking the head wherever it belongs today. We can't rely on what happened last time in our practice. We are always 
in real time, whatever the needful is in our bodies, which may not reflect last practice. And if you're in a position where your hands are kind of pushing down, your shoulders are kind of in limbo land, I find it helpful to take the palms face up so the shoulders can truly surrender. Remember, we wanna feel active legs here and a passive cascading torso and skull. So as we hold for a couple minutes, you might notice your setup is making you feel a little bit um, jammed up in the crown of the head if you're in the crown down position. So you might need to adjust to keep the cascading effect going. Remember the edge is a moving target. So we're always vigilant and responsive. Gently turn the inner thighs without the use of your strap. Rotate the flesh from the inner thighs over the tops of your thighs around back to the outer hips and thighs. Remember the harnessing feeling in your hip creases. See if you can just plunge a little deeper the femur heads into the hip sockets. We're going to start to leave the pose now, so helping yourself away from your head support, helping the feet come closer together. And then feel free to move your setup aside. We're going to come onto our backs with a blanket. And just have your strap available. We'll put a blanket under the head just so that you find level position with forehead and chin. So if you don't need that, of course, you don't need a blanket. Most of us do because we sleep with pillows. So we're going to take the, the strap now and make a little passable loop. It's going to go over your right foot. So once you have a little loop, you can take it right behind the big toe and small toe ball nouns, the front arch of the foot. Ooh, it really got a messy strap. There we go. And once you have the foot looped, extend the leg up and you're going to take the tail of your strap and run it behind your neck from right to left. And then the idea here is that we get the left arm extended completely out to the side and on the floor. And I have my hand wrapped so that I don't have to work so hard to squeeze on that strap. I'm also gonna flip my palm up on the left palm. Once you have all of this, go ahead and straighten your left leg and really plant it. So it's not just sleeping there. Think about doing this pose standing. The left leg is the leg that's standing. Tilt your chin down and press up through the right heel, especially the inner right heel. And we're just gonna stay here for a few breaths. Your left toes should be directly over your left heel. With your right hand now, reach up on your strap and reach up as high as you need to to straighten the arm. Right hand will be guiding you here. Resist outward through the left hand. 
reach all the way from midline with the left hand. On an exhale, start to move the right leg to the right. The left hand is resisting to the left. And just let this be about your sacrum staying very level. So again, the idea is not your deepest Parjva Padangustasana. We're really keeping attention honed in on the pelvis staying balanced. So center of gravity, it's very important to have this awareness. Chin hugging chest. Remember what your thigh flesh needs to do when you're in a lateral pose. So even though your strap is no longer looped over your right thigh, if it were, you're lifting the inner thigh and rolling it up over the top thigh and out to the side. Go ahead and exhale to center. And now we're just gonna switch out. The strap is now gonna run from the left side of your neck to the right. You're going to take the strap and thread it underneath the neck from left to right. Again, you want to fully extend now the right arm to the side, perpendicular from the trunk. Wrap if you need to. Left hand is your guide, so reach up the strap, but make sure your shoulder stays rooted and your arm is straight. The left toes stay exactly where they are. They don't get to fan out, which they try to do here. So roll the left inner thigh flesh down. And then keeping the pelvis level. Exhale, move your right leg to the left. Not, nobody's got a measuring stick. Nobody's gonna compare us against each other with range of motion. You're just keeping these things in balance. If you've uprooted your right sacrum, put it back on the floor. Even if the leg moves back an inch, Keep that perfect symmetrical impression of your sacrum against the mat, kind of at the forefront. When we cross midline, the inner thigh has to do the oppositional thing. The right inner thigh is moving now down and around the back thigh and up over the outer hip. What, good job. So back to center. We're gonna transfer our little loop over to left arch right behind the ball mounds. And you can keep the strap running where it is left to right side of your neck. Once your left leg is overhead, you can extend your right leg with purpose, so press it into the floor, put the toes above the heel, minimize the gapping behind the ankle and knee. You're gonna reach outward with the right arm so you have a straight perpendicular arm from the torso. Reach up the strap with the left, make sure the shoulder doesn't follow, it stays anchored. And then feeling the balance of the pelvis here on an exhale, resisting through the right arm let that left leg gently, slowly move out to the left. Bring the inner thigh flash to the left leg up over the front thigh and around to the outer thigh. Anchoring your right inner thigh down. And sensing if the sacrum is balanced, the impression if you were to jump up and look at your mat, would the indentation be even or would you have a imbalanced, heavy, deep impression on the left and almost nothing on the right? And then exhale back to center and we'll switch the strap to run from right Neck over to the left side. 
will set up with your left arm reaching out straight. Right hand up toward the foot, right shoulder stays anchored. And then moving from the balanced pelvis, keeping that as much as you can, start to exhale, guiding your left leg to the right. Still rolling your right inner thigh down, but this time also rolling your left inner thigh down around the back of the thigh and then up. Breathing. Go ahead and gently move back to center. You can release the strap from your foot. And we're going to make a loop. Make a loop with your strap. It's going to approximately be the width of the shoulder girdle. So how you size that for yourself is make a fixed loop that doesn't budge, not a sliding loop like we've been working with. So those of you that work with rings, you have to pass through the two rings. And then you're gonna travel back and go over the first ring and under the second ring. And then we'll just get a little bit more into flesh of the arms before we come into Shavasana. So we're gonna use uh, Supta Tadasana, reclining mountain with Urdhva Hastasana arms, so the overhead arms. So you're gonna fit, you're gonna size your loop, just slide your wrists inside. And what we wanna see is the wrists are as wide as the shoulders. So if it's too big, too small, you have to adjust the strap. But the exception to that is, if your wrists align with the shoulders and your chest becomes concave, it's much better to have allowance between the wrists, greater allowance between the wrists than to have a concave chest. We always prioritize the chest staying out in the sunshine. So once you have your perfect loop, you can extend your legs, bring your arms so they're above your head. Your hands are within the strap. So the wrists, the outer wrists are pressing the strap containing the wrist, your palms are up. Imagine you're in standing mountain. So put your legs on duty or they're not just sleeping in Shavasana setting. Your legs are active, pressurized into the floor. Your toes are on top of your heels. You're reaching out through four corners of each heel, the ball mounds, toe pads. You're extending through the fingernails, but inviting the shoulders back into the trunk. Your chin tilts toward your chest. And we're getting really nice awareness of the arms and the shoulders being an external rotation. We're gonna tie this into bridge pose. We're just kind of imprinting here. The floor is a great teacher. So notice if you have giant gapping between your back and the floor, you might need to do a little bit of a pelvic tilt to be in more neutral setting with your pelvis and feel the outer upper arms pressing toward the floor, the inner shoulder blade tips pressing into the chest, into the front body. Good. So now just release all that effort and step your feet onto the mat so your heels are stepping as close to your sitting bones as they can and your toes are in front of your heels. And then we're gonna run the strap now under the buttock line wrist to wrist again, palms up. So once you have all that, notice how the thumbs are lifting away from the floor, the pinkies are crashing into the floor. Try to equalize that, lift your pinkies, roll your thumbs down. That's gonna encourage the flesh of the arms to follow. You should feel the outer upper arm flesh moving down, the inner upper arm flesh moving up. Again, there's that possible gap in your low back, try to pressurize your small back into the floor. And on an exhale, lift your hips, 
Press into your big toes and direct the inner thigh flesh down to soften the buttocks and to tap into the power of your legs here. We kind of forget the power of the legs here, which if we get into, if we tap into, it can amplify the pose. It can bring that global awareness. Remember, if your awareness is caught up somewhere in the body, it's usually a sign there's an imbalance of effort somewhere. Keep stepping into the big toes, inner heels, drop the buttock flesh, roll the inner thighs down, raise the outer hip flesh, roll the upper arm, outer upper arm flesh down, lift the inner shoulder blades up. Two more breaths. And you can soften down. Release your arms from that container. And then draw your legs in one at a time, either grabbing the shins or the thighs. Just following with a neutral reclining child after bridge pose, which is a back bend, just giving ourselves a little bit of equanimity here. Tilting the chin toward the chest and just envisioning your spine in a single curve. Keep a little pressure of the outer knees inward so that your hips, sacrum, pelvis can broaden. And when the chest and thighs come together, or the belly and thighs, our nervous system is tripped into parasympathetic. So very soothing. And then you're going to step your feet down and take any other movements that you need here. Anything that needs to be addressed that might possibly nag at you while you're in Shavasana. Set up for Shavasana with whatever supports you need, head support, behind the knee support, eye pillow support. We're gonna put the body at complete ease now. So once you've place your trunk, your skull, your limbs in alignment. Take every exhale and just try to drop your own weight into the floor, surrender any holding, any remaining effort, any contraction. Let your body become soft. Soften your gaze. Just let your breath ease in and ease out. One of my favorite poems by Rumi. Very little grows on jagged rock. Be ground, be crumbled. So wild flowers will come up where you are. You have been stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. Just be a passenger on each wave of your own breath, just for the next minute. Nothing more is needed.
start to lengthen out your breaths but without inviting any disturbance to your brain or body. Just drawing the breath in slowly, smoothly, steadily. Letting it flow back out in the very same way. Finding your way back to automatic breathing. Begin to invite very little simple movements into your body. Holding at the knees and the elbows. Taking your weight to one side of your body. Trying to come up to seated with minimized effort, at least disturbance in the brain or body. Coming back to the same position you started in, but probably feeling a little bit different. Always transformed by this practice. And just sit with that transformation for a moment. Just acknowledge it, hands to heart. Sensing into what you feel now. Scrubbing up on the breastbone, inviting the flesh of the chest up and over and down the back. Keeping the gaze pointed toward the heart. Big breath in through the nose. And let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. work everybody hope to see you again soon and enjoy the day